Hey everybody and welcome back to the YouTube channel today, Dylan Vlog. Today I'm going to be building an outdoor box turtle enclosure. Um, so this is like a DIY video in case you want to build your own enclosure. I might not get it all done today, but I at least want to get my wood cut and show you what materials I'm having and using and how to get the framework done. Alright, let's go. So, to start out here, I have my lumber. So this is two inches thick, 10 inches wide, 10 inches long. I have four of them. So I have 40 feet of two by 10. And then I have one by fours here. And I have eight of those, eight foot long. I have a roll of aluminum screening. I have a bag of gravel, garden stakes, uh, hinges, some locks, some screws, this tub, and some mulch down there. And over here, I have the plants I'm putting in. I have sage, peppermint, some grass, uh, basil, and some purple basil. Just to put in there to, you know, make it look nice. I'm gonna start out with this circular saw and I'm gonna cut all my pieces to size and then I'll uh, get back with you after that. All right, so the first thing I went ahead and did, which I forgot to mention in the first video, this is all pressure treated wood. And I also have a water sealer that I'm gonna put on the outsides of it. But, um, so I cut out, this is the location I'm putting it first off here. It's a nice partially shaded, get some sunlight. I probably cut out a couple more of these branches up here to, uh, give them a little more sunlight directly but I did an eight foot eight foot and a four foot and a four foot so I'm gonna run stakes down these on the inside and outside just to keep them held to get in place and I'm also gonna screw the ends all in together with big long screw uh, decking screws and this is just the basic frame so it's eight by four and the next thing I'm going to do is I have one last of these 2 by 10s um, I'm going to cut it into slats 4 foot long. So that way I can put them here on the ends and have them a covered area. And then the rest of this is going to be screened, a screen top on hinges. So uh, I'll get with you after the next process here. Okay, so now what I've done is screwed in the ends. And as you can see, I've put my four foot board across the back here. That way that my outside per size is still four foot. Um, the length now is gonna be eight foot, four inches, but that's fine. I would rather keep the four foot the same because the screening that I have is only 48 inches, which is four foot to go over the top, okay? So what I've done is screwed in the sides with decking screws boom boom the corners were all connected I always drill them out first with a drill bit then put the screw in I used uh, three and a half inch screws with a t25 bit and then I put these two boards here coming out two foot and those are just scraps off the ends of these eight footers the reason I did that is because over here I'm gonna have him a covered area where he can go back and stay away from the Sun and stay shaded or sleep or whatever he wants to do and then over here is gonna be more of the exploratory area where I'm gonna put a water tub, some garden plants, like a log, some rocks, some cool stuff for him to bask on and hide under. So, uh, all right, now the next thing I have to do is I'm gonna get those four foot pieces I have that I cut um, at, uh, the two by 10 and put them over here, covering up this area. And I also have hinges for them that way I can pull them up and uh, make sure everything's okay and everything's doing good and all that. So here's what it looks like so far with the two pieces on the end for the covering. And um, I'm not gonna screw those on yet with the hinges and all that because I have to sink this. You can see how there's some gaps between the frame and the ground. I'm gonna have to dig a little trench where all this is and kind of sink it down in the ground a couple inches just so he doesn't dig out or nothing can dig in so uh that's going to be the next step of this process so i'm going to see how i can do on that because it is 100 degrees out here today and about 80 percent humidity and there is 
hundreds of cicadas just flying everywhere. So let's see what we can do. Okay. Now I've dug a trench around where it's been and laid it in the ground about an inch or two. And then packed the, I went inside with my tamper and packed all the mud around the outside there so I don't see no gaps. Sheesh. It's hot. It's literally 100 degrees, 80% humidity. I'm dripping sweat. All right, so got these two boards here and I fastened them with some hinges down there and I put some stakes across here to keep this as one so that way when I open it, it's easier than popping up two separate ones. But boom, so I would say that's about halfway finished because this screen door on top is probably gonna be the other half and then of course decorating it and putting the landscaping in will be the easy part and the cheap part i didn't go over prices with this with lumber being up with everything you're going to see in today's video as far as lumber mulch plants the water tub the everything screws it's about a 250 and fifty project but this is a giant turtle enclosure where if i rescued franklin the box turtle um someone was had him that didn't know how to exactly take great care of him so I got him and I would love to be able to do that for other box turtles and have them right here where my kids and people could come and learn about these awesome creatures that are native to where we live. I actually have um, box turtles in my backyard back here in the woods and the kids have found them and they always say, oh, can we keep them? Can we keep them? And I always say no because if you find a box turtle in the wild, they normally only live in a one mile range their whole entire life. So you need to leave them there and uh, they survive a lot better. Box turtles that are raised in the in the wild they don't know to eat pellets and the stuff that we try to feed them so it's best to leave them out and a uh, little conservation for us okay so now i've taken my one by fours and i cut the sides at 78 inches for the long ends and across this short end is 40 inches and then you have four inches of the one by four on each side, so that makes it 48. So what this is, is I have to put together these frames. This is one frame, two frame. I lay the screen in the middle and then fold this top frame on top of this, screw it in, and that gives me my top door. So how I have to connect these is with this little handy dandy tool here. So this is a pocket jig set and it comes with this tool this bit and this bit and I bought these screws separate for pocket hole jigs and what I'll do is hook it up here on the edge of this board that way I can screw in from this board to this board without make, leaving a huge hole all right I'll let, get back with you after that okay so you see the pocket jig puts the holes down the side like that so I can easily put a screw through so I got those two frames done. I laid the mesh screen over top and put little screws in it to hold it into place while I fold this frame on top and screw it all together. And that's just to hold the screen on there better, of course. And boom, then that'll be hinged and put on top and we'll be about done. Okay, so after getting those screen frames, those frames put together, this is what it's looking like. I still have to put hinges back here on the screen and um, some locks up front here so we can keep it shut. But it's uh, break time, so I'll get back with you when I'm finishing it up. Thanks for watching. Wipe your paws. Yeah. Okay. So I'm back to working on this. Took a little break. Now it's the afternoon. It's nice and shady. I think I'm going to measure out in the middle here and put me a support beam across the middle to give that a little strength. Put these hinges on, throw on a little lock, and uh, should be good. Sully. Okay. So I measured out the middle here. It was 71 inches. Uh, threw in a 1x4 on top, 1x4 on the bottom. Screwed them together. Also drilled in from the sides into 
them at the ends to give some support. So now it's just throw some hinges on the back, throw a lock on the front, cut off this access screening, and then it's like into the inside for the fun part. Alrighty. So got the hinges on back there. Boom boom. Got the sash lock here. Boom. Boom. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. So the last thing to do is pull this lid back and back away. All right, all right, all right. Well, it's the next morning. And here's how the final layout looks. I took a uh, gray gel stain and stained this really deep. And then I stained the top kind of a lighter so you can see the grain. I still got to wait for that to dry. I put a handle on here. Set it all up. I got the water tub. I got peppermint, purple basil, uh, sweet basil, and sage over there. I still have two plants I gotta put in. I'm gonna put one over there, maybe one in the middle of the rocks here. And then I gotta hit all this with a water coating treatment. And uh, we're gonna release Mr. Franklin into it and see how he likes it. Boom. So this is what I always use to uh, waterproof anything I have outside. I normally just use it for wood. It works really good. Um, since the bottom of it's pressure treated, I'll probably wait a little while before I water treat it anyway, because it'll be fine. I did add in pathos, this log he loves to hide under, another sweet basil, and a parsley. I pretty much just put a bunch of herbs and stuff in there because he wanted to eat them, and if not, they smell nice and stuff. Um, so when I waterproof it, I'm just going to waterproof this top end. So I'm just going to fold it over there and do it all over there. That way none of that chemical overdraft comes into here. But uh, I think Mr. Franklin's ready to be released. I think he'd be really excited about this. Franklin. So here's the hero. Franklin. The box turtle. And he is an active, active box turtle. So I really think he's going to enjoy this. His first steps into his new home. <laughs> 